This is Juliana Aranikar Breeze. I'm here in Brighton in the, uh, well, I suppose it's the headquarters in Brighton of Shabbat, Chabad, I've been corrected, uh, by uh, Rabbi Pesach Efun, who uh, in fact is from South Africa. Um, tell me about your name, first of all. Okay, for my name is Pesach. Uh, Pesach is, uh, was just a name given to me by my parents because I was named after somebody. It's an unusual name, but it's not totally uh, unique. There are people who are called Pesach. So I wasn't born in Pesach, by the way. <laughs> uh, the name Efun... Uh, and Pesach, of course, is Passover. Passover, exactly. For those exactly, who don't exactly. know. Exactly. And nobody's going to pass over me, by the way. <laughs> okay. So the name Efun is a little bit uh, unusual. Yeah. My father's original name was Yefune. But when they came to South Africa, like so many other immigrants from Lithuania, from Lithuania, that uh, somehow at the air at the airport at the immigration, the name became Efun. But the name Yefuna is actually a biblical name. Uh, what does might, it mean? Okay, uh, you might recall the famous episode when Moses was about to bring the Jewish people into the land of Israel. That he sent representatives from each of the twelve tribes. From the tribe of Judah, one of the the representative was a man called Kalev ben Yefune. That was a name, Yefune. So Yefune was our family name. There are not too many Yefunas in the world that we know of besides our particular family. And are you all related? Um, there is another family. There was another family in South Africa called Efune, and we were not related to them. Oh. I never, we never actually met them, but we knew they existed. As far as we know, all the other Efunes that we know are all related. All uh, my uh -huh. grandfather had a very large family, uh -huh. but other Efunes we don't know. Right, right. Anyway, you grew up in Israel. No, I grew up in South Africa. Oh, my mistake, my mistake. I grew up in South Africa. I was born there. My sister Johannesburg, my father emigrated in the early 1920s with his father, my grandfather and the brothers and his sisters. And he met my mother actually was a Holocaust survivor in the sense she didn't actually go to a concentration camp. But she and her family fled Austria in 1938 when the Anschluss and they stayed out the war in Nice, hiding in Nice in, nice in southern France. Wow. After the war, my father went traveling and he met my mother in Nice and they got married. And that's how my family landed up in South Africa. But I was educated there. I went to school there until the age of 18 when I went to study in the yeshiva in Israel. Now, now how did you know that this was your chosen path in life? Do you know what? People ask me that question and um, I don't have an answer. Sometimes things just happen. You know, there was no great epiphany. I can't say to you, I woke up one day and I said, wow, the <laughs> Lord spoke to me and said, it didn't happen. Listen, I knew about these things. My grandfather was quite an important influence in my life. Um, we knew I just wanted to study, you know, sometimes maybe, Julian, it'll happen to you. You'll have an arousal within. <laughs> and before we know it, you're going to tell me you're going to go study in ladies' yeshiva, right? Oh, there's a ladies' yeshiva? Of course, you can become a Rebbitson. That's a lady. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a bit late in life. I mean, it's never too late. It's never too late. <laughs> And that's what happened, so I can't answer that question, because I don't believe that. It just happened like that. So you went to Israel, um, you went to the Lubavitch. Uh, correct. Sorry? Correct, correct. Yes, um, which is where you gave me the it's name? It's a place called Kfar Chabad. Kfar Chabad is a village, it's probably a town by now, very, very close to the airport. In fact, if you uh, go... Uh, 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 the, the near Tel Aviv, in fact. Exactly. It's very close to the big airport, Ben Gurion. Yeah. And if you drive, actually, from the airport to Tel Aviv, you can actually see the whole village on the uh, left-hand side of the road. And so, how many people live there? Oh, wow. There must be... Maybe today over three, four hundred families living there. It's very, three, four hundred yes, families. Yes, so it, how many people would that be? I then? don't know. Maybe ten thousand. I suppose. No, no. I don't know how to. No. Say each family has got say uh, ten kids. So I don't know. You work, but it's large. It's a lot. Each family has ten well, some kids. kids uh, Twelve kids or uh, very large families. But I went to study in Kvachabad. There is a yeshiva, right? There was a school for rabbinical studies, and that's why I went to. 
Right. And you were there for two years, you I said. I was there for two years. And then after that, I went to study in New York at the world headquarters of Lubavitch. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. In fact, the address is 770 Eastern Parkway, Brooklyn, New York. And how many years were you there? I was there for three years. In the interim, I went to study somewhere else, but basically three years. And then I got married and we stayed another year and then I came to England. Now tell me, how you how did you meet your wife? Ah, <laughs> it, was was it, was, it was a shidduch. It was a shidduch. It was a shidduch made in heaven, you know. But now what actually happens very interesting is that uh, why did I think it was worthwhile uh, meeting her? Because, because she's English. Well, English, yes, I suppose that's definitely a plus. Uh, is she from Brighton? No, she's from London. She's from London. But what actually happened within a very short period of time, four different people, different people independent of each other, came to me and said, why don't you go and meet Panina in London? So after the fourth time, I thought, hang on a moment, maybe, maybe God is saying something to me, I better go. And I went, and as they say, the rest of is history. Uh, was it an instant uh, communication? Uh, pretty much after 10 days, we got engaged. Ah. <laughs> I think it was 10 days, yeah. 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 So you got married in, in England? Lo in London, yes. In London, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so England's been your home ever since. Uh, more or less, yes. But you've yeah. just come back from Chicago. Uh, your parents live well, there? Well, actually, when you sent me that email, I said I was in the airport. My parents actually live in Phoenix, in Arizona. Good heavens, I've been there. But I uh, was returning via Chicago. So when I checked my oh, emails, okay. when I landed, I was in Chicago. But actually, I wasn't in Chicago. I was just passing by, but I was in Phoenix, and my parents. Good heavens. Yeah. Yes. So uh, your parents then moved from Israel? Uh, no, from South Africa. Ah, they, of course, they, they never went. They never no, went to no, Israel. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So they, they, they went to live in Phoenix. Yes. yes. Uh, did they move because of uh, the problems, apartheid? Well, they retired, so? and I have a brother living there, so they went to live there. Okay. That's the okay. Area, thank God. Okay. Yes. Now, you told me that uh, you go to international conferences. Um, they have the uh, big Shabbat, Ch Chabad, Chabad. Uh, conference yes. every year. How many people go? Well, uh, definitely over 3,000. But when you is it always it, in the same place? It's always in the same place. It's always in Brooklyn, New York. It's always around the world headquarters because that's where people want to come and uh, people. Do you have singing and dancing as well? Yes, singing and dancing. If you want to YouTube, if you really, I'm now I'm changing. The, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah I've do. seen. Well, if you want to, do you remember Rabbi Sachs, Jonathan Sachs? Yeah. Uh, yes. He was the previous yes. chief rabbi. He was uh, one of, of the, in England. In England. Yes. So if you Google him, Jonathan Sachs Kinus. K-I-N-U-S, you will watch his speech, which he spoke to all these people. It is absolutely riveting speech. Oh, okay. It's only about 40 minutes long, you know, right, it doesn't go on. Right. But that's worthwhile, and you'll have some feel of the atmosphere at the Kinos. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so. so tell me, what, what projects do you have? So you have to understand, really, where Chabad, it's called Chabad, come into it. what what is but I think we'll do this in part two okay. because we're nearly at the end of part one okay fine so we'll we'll go so back so then yes yeah, so you have to ask me something else then oh god oh I think we'll end there I I, I can't think okay, right now okay that's fine all that's right fine. so we'll continue in part two and actually talk about Chabad okay thank, thank you. you thank you very much